As mass protests rock Israel against the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his plan to overhaul Israel's judiciary, we turn now to look at how Netanyahu secretly tried to help Donald Trump win the 2016 election. That's the focus of a new cover story in The Nation, headlined, The Candidate and the Spy. Longtime award-winning investigative journalist James Bamford reveals Netanyahu dispatched a secret Israeli agent to the United States in the spring of 2016 to meet with advisors to Trump and offer to share secret intelligence with the campaign against Hillary Clinton. The story is based in part on a series of text messages sent by the Israeli secret agent to Trump advisor Roger Stone. In one message from August 12, 2016, the agent wrote, quote, Roger, hello from Jerusalem. Any progress? He's going to be defeated unless we intervene. We have critical intel. The key is in your hands, the text read. Later, the agent wrote, quote, October surprise is coming. James Bamford writes, quote, while the American media and political system fixated on Russian President Vladimir Putin and his armies of cyber warriors, trolls and bots, what was completely missed in the Russiagate investigation of 2016 was the Israeli connection. No details of it were ever revealed in the heavily redacted Mueller report or in the Senate Intelligence Committee report. James Bamford joins us now from Washington, D.C., author of many books, his latest, Spy Fail, Foreign Spies, Mole Saboteurs, and the Collapse of America's Counterintelligence. Jim, welcome back to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. Take us on this journey. Talk about what happened, why we um, know a lot about Russia, um, or at least the uh, a lot is made of in going after Russia, saying it tried to overthrow the 2016 election or spin it for, for Trump. What actually is documented here is Israel's involvement. And yet, Mueller report, Senate Intelligence Committee, it looks like they knew but just didn't want to talk about it. Well, exactly. The uh, documents I got are from the FBI. There are the FBI affidavit about this. There's documents, uh, uh, numerous uh, quotes from the secret agent, the Israeli secret agent sent by Netanyahu, talking about the PM, which the FBI uh, agent uh, indicates uh, was the prime minister. And uh, uh, lays out uh, a months-long plot, basically, from uh, May of 2016 till the fall of 2016, right up to the election. Um, this was investigated by the Mueller uh, team. It was the Mueller team, the Mueller FBI agents, who actually uh, got a search warrant for the secret agent's uh, communications. And that's what these documents are. These are the basis of that investigation from the FBI and the Mueller uh, uh, team. But all this was redacted from the, uh, from the final Mueller report. All they focused on was Russia, and in the end, they basically gave uh, Russia a, a bill of health. They said that there was no collusion between uh, Russia and uh, the Trump campaign. Uh, they left out a little bit uh, from the report, and that's that there was collusion, but it was from Netanyahu and Israel. Uh, to the Trump campaign, and it went on for months and months, and and involved uh, providing the uh, Trump campaign with secret access to the uh, uh, information that the Russians were picking up from Hillary Clinton's campaign and the DNC. In other words, the Israelis, they have a very, very sophisticated uh, eavesdropping organization, Unit 8200. It's their equivalent of the NSA. And they were eavesdropping on the Russians and eavesdropping on Wikigate, uh, Wikigate and they were, and Julian Assange, and they were picking up all this information that the Russians were getting from uh, the Clinton campaign and the DNC. And rather than giving it to the president of the United States, to Obama, uh, which is what an ally is supposed to do, especially one that gets $4 billion a year, um, they instead uh, were giving it to the uh, Trump campaign, secretly giving it to the Trump campaign, in order to get concessions 
from Trump when he became president, and hopefully they were going to help make him well, president. Well, let's talk about that moment, why this was so critical for Netanyahu. Talk about the quartet, the direction Obama and the quartet were going in, and why Netanyahu wanted Trump to win. Well, a key reason he wanted uh, Trump to win was because Trump uh, vowed to uh, throw out the nuclear agreement with Iran that uh, the Obama administration worked very hard on and was very useful to the United States. And uh, Netanyahu didn't like it. He didn't want it. He uh, wanted Trump to uh, get rid of it, and Trump uh, was planning to do that. But he wanted a second thing, too. The Obama administration was putting a great deal of pressure on, uh, on uh, Netanyahu to work out an agreement with the Palestinians over Jerusalem. Uh, which is divided. Uh, uh, the final agreement over Jerusalem was going to be divided between the Palestinians and Israel. Israel wanted uh, Netanyahu wanted the entire uh, city to be Israeli, and so they were putting pressure on the Trump campaign, saying, uh, "Look, uh, this is what we want, and we can help." Trump get elected, uh, but we have to have a—basically, have to have an agreement that he's going to help us on this uh, uh, issue over the uh, sovereignty of Jerusalem. And uh, in the very end, uh, that's what happened. Uh, there was a secret meeting, uh, or at least a private meeting, in the uh, Trump penthouse in New York, just between uh, uh, Netanyahu and and Trump. And after it was over, Trump came out, and that's what he said. He said that, uh, uh, if I'm elected president, I'm uh, going to move the uh, U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem and declare Jerusalem the capital of Israel. So um, uh, the Israelis got what they wanted, and Trump got what he wanted, and the American public was uh, uh, screwed in the meantime. Uh, Jim Bamford, in your piece, The Candidate and the Spy, you write, although the affidavit did not specify any individual defendants, the numerous potential criminal charges laid out in the FBI documents spoke to the seriousness of the Israeli plot. They included violation of the Foreign Contributions Ban, which prohibits foreigners from contributing money or something of value to federal, state or local elections. Other charges included aiding and abetting conspiracy wire fraud, attempted conspiracy to commit wire fraud, still another charge unauthorized access to a protected computer, indicates Israel may have conducted illegal hacking operations. Can you talk more about this? And the man who is the spy uh, in that title of your piece, married to, what, Netanyahu's cousin? Well, yeah, they don't name a uh, the, the spy. The spy's name is redacted, uh, but there are a lot of similarities with one of Trump's closest associates, uh, Isaac Moho, and uh, he's a very shadowy character. The uh, he's described as very discreet, and uh, Netanyahu uh, sends him on secret missions, various places. So I just mentioned that that happens to be a very uh, close associate who goes on secret missions for. Netanyahu, at least according to the uh, Israeli uh, newspaper Haratz, the well-known and highly respected Haratz. Um, so he's a candidate, but I don't know if he was the secret agent or not. I'm just mentioning him as one of the people that Netanyahu does send out on secret missions. So, um, you know, I think it would be very important for the U.S. government to identify this person who is trying to. Uh, uh, interfere and, and uh, throw the election uh, in, in favor of Trump. Uh, uh, you also comment that it's not only the United States that the Netanyahu government uh, was involved with trying to interfere with the elections. You talk about Latin America, Africa. Talk about this Archimedes group. Well, uh, just to back up a little bit, uh, just recently, uh, in the last few weeks, there was an enormous uh, investigation that was revealed uh, throughout much of the world, actually. Uh, uh, and it was a, an eight-month investigation by journalists uh, from some of the most respected newspapers in the world, including Haratz in Israel, uh, La, uh, uh, Pais in, uh, in, in Spain, The Observer and, and The Guardian in London. Uh, the uh, uh, Der Spiegel in, in Germany and uh, um, uh, 
French newspaper. Uh, anyway, there, it was an enormous investigation. went on for eight months. And the focus was Israel um, interfering in elections around the world. And they came out with an enormous amount of uh, detail, including undercover investigations of Israeli uh, uh, activity, um, trying to overthrow, or, or rather, uh, throw elections in Latin America, uh, Africa, and uh, according to one of the members of the, uh, of the group, uh, in the United States. So uh, this has been going on for a very long time. It basically identified Israel as, a, as the world's center for uh, election interference and uh, or secret election interference. And uh, Archimedes Group was one of those companies uh, earlier on, before this investigation, that was identified as a company uh, that Israel was using to, um, or at least it was a private company with ties to the Israeli intelligence, that was using uh, uh, a lot of fraud and other aspects to throw elections in various parts of the world. Thirty, I think there were 13 countries or something it was involved in. So this has been going on for a long time. Israel has been involved in enormous amounts of covert operations and intelligence operations in the U.S. just in the last seven years. Uh, I, half my book deals with Israeli uh, intelligence and covert operations in the United States. But there is a determination by all parties involved, the, uh, the administration, Congress, and the mainstream media, to completely uh, use blinders when it comes to Israel. So, finally, while the U.S. media fixated on Russian interference in the 2016 election, another campaign to influence the outcome by Israel went unreported. That was 2016. Now we're moving in on the 2024 election. And you have the prime minister of Israel is, ba again, Benjamin Netanyahu. And, again, President Trump is running for president. Your final thoughts, Jim? Well, it's uh, going to be a, a deja vu all over again. It's going to be a repeat, since we have the same players in the same positions and the same media that pay, pays no attention to uh, anything that Israel does that's uh, questionable in the United States and the Congress and the administration that completely turn a blind eye to Israeli intelligence. So, yeah, we're here again, and it just uh, can repeat itself with the same players doing the same play all over again, unless there is congressional investigation or hard-hitting reporting by the mainstream media, and uh, 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 further investigation by the FBI. Well, Jim Bamford, we want to have you back on to talk about your book, but we want to thank you so much for being with us now. James Bamford, longtime investigative journalist, will link to your new cover story for The Nation, The Candidate and the Spy. We end